thank you for taking the time. How's the day going aside from people asking you the same questions over and over and over and over again? Um, well, you know, it's uh, it's hot. I'm trying to beat the heat. I got some ice packs here. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's actually, they said it's, uh, we're headed for a school uh, cool down. So whatever that means, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know, D.I.B., great single. Oh, now, no. obviously, uh, you know, there's some initials in there, but is the name itself a tribute to Black Sabbath, the N.I.B. track? Um, it is. A, uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's probably what makes it seem so cool to me. That's what made it seem so cool to me. Um, I just I couldn't think it was a working title. I couldn't think of anything, uh, anything better. So I just I rolled with that. And yes, yeah, so I probably wouldn't have thought that if it weren't for N.I.B. Got it. Uh, Spencer is on the track singing. Great to hear Spencer. Is he on all the tracks on Rock and Roll Chose Me? Um, uh, Crash, just he just appears on this song. And uh, it was, uh, I mean, it, I, he ended up being perfect for the song. I just, I, I was in a, a I, I, I wanted to get him on the record. I He was he was in a band called Delta Rose. They're amazing out here. And uh, the guitar player from that band, Forrest Goss, appears on a few of the songs on, on the record. I wanted to get Crash on there. Um, we're secretly trying to get them back together, by the way, because they broke up. So I guess the cat's out of the bag now. <laughs> well, but, yeah, um, we'll wait for the blabbermouth clickbait pickup of, you know, Guns N' Roses keyboardist wants to reunite legendary L.A. band. Yes, yes. Um, so I, I'd written too many lyrics. And <laughs> as I was singing that whole part, I'm like, it was starting to lose its effectiveness. And I thought, you know what, this is the spot to bring a crash because it's, you know, now we can help. He can help me, um, you know, deliver this message. Whatever that is. Yeah. yeah. So this is the second solo record of yours because Rock and Roll Ain't Easy came out. I think it was 2018. And I had the pleasure of getting you on one of those golden robot junkets where they went, hey, Dizzy, you're going to speak to these 12 people in the next four hours. And I got you mm -hmm. on that one. But that was your first ever solo record. Did it literally take six years to do another one or did you go on break from writing after that one well the first one took a lot longer <laughs> so um this didn't seem that long i i think we kind of jumped into it uh, fairly soon after rock and roll easy finally came out um jason achilles mazillis who uh co-produced this this record with me he mixed the first record and we kind of had a deal and that was like if i mix this um, you got to let me record your next record. So I said, absolutely. Uh, we did one song. We did uh, um, Splendid Isolation, the Z Warren Zevon track, the cover. And it went well. So I said, yes, you can do the next record. And um, I don't know if he regretted it or not, but <laughs> it was, uh, um, I, yeah. So uh, I forgot the question. What was it? Oh, yeah. So um, it's been done for probably since 2020. And we just wanted to find the right uh, home for it. We we uh, wanted to make sure everything was in place um, this time around to to market it properly and get it out there to as many people as possible. Hence doing press, hence working at radio, et cetera. Now, you're yeah, and part of it, you know? here. one of many compliments from a Darren to a Darren right there. And yes. that uh, your Rolodex is a-list but you know very quietly it's an a-list one and you've always had great side gigs when you're not busy with gnr you know joe perry stuff psychedelic first slim jim we don't know when we're gonna see you pop up at an all-star jam etc are there special guests on this new record there there wasn't a lot of even uh info given to us press besides here's dib and new album soon you know i think the the first record which i i uh, co-produced with with the the uh legendary del james um you we you know part of that the idea for that record was to bring in different people from different different bands like a lot of people that wouldn't have normally played together um and and it worked thanks to del really um but with this record i had sort of a, a group of guys in mind that that I'm, i work with out here in LA, mostly LA based guys and, and just, uh, you know, kind of went in and knocked it out and, um, they're great musicians. I also had the hookers and blow guys come in and play on, on a few songs as well. And, um, you know, Alex is, Alex is actually on, on, on DAB is that amazing guitar stuff there. And, and Jeff Duncan also, 
um that's you know he blistered through that solo which by the way was the first and only take of that guitar solo <laughs> so i mean it's it, you hear that stuff all the time it's absolutely true it's like because we kind of had forgotten about the guitar solo when alex was in and um so we had jeff for some other other tracks and i said hey well while we got you can you just maybe lay down a solo on this part he heard it once and he played what's on there <laughs> so it's ridiculous and jason and i kind of looked at each other and went i think we got it no need wow. to no need to try another one so that's yeah so to clarify hookers and blow is still active this is just a solo thing aside from that it is and hopefully as with uh my first record i'll convince the hookers and blow guys to play some songs off this since they do appear on it um and then that way i can blur the the line between my solo thing and hookers and blow and and it just makes it a lot easier for me but that, could, yeah, that sounded pretty ridiculous didn't it my solo thing and hookers and blow it almost rhymed but you know yeah what can you do so uh, a stupid question for you uh, you were from boulder colorado before it was cool to be from boulder colorado your bio emphasizes the boulder thing did you get to go to casa bonita back in the day yes as the, and it's i'll tell you it's we moved to boulder when i was my, my family moved from from suburban chicago to boulder when i was eight years old um and yeah, which is I I thank I thank God every day. <laughs> um, when, whenever I think about that, that we did that, you know, because it, what a great place to grow up in Boulder, and uh, it was all my dad's doing, and you know, my mom agreed. And, um, we didn't like it at the time because we don't want to leave our friends and all that, but it was great. But but yes, so I was the new kid in school, and every, every year they would do a field trip to Casa Bonita, and uh, yes. So I didn't know what it was. And I was like, how can you not know? You've never been to Casa Bonita, man. Um, and when I, I remember walking in there and it was flipping, it was magic. I mean, there was like Acapulco cliff drive, divers in the middle of a restaurant, right? Um, I can't, I don't remember the food being very good at all. What I've heard is the food is barely edible. You get the cheapest thing on the menu just so you can hang out and see the cliff divers. Well, they did have uh, something that was new to me then. Uh, they they bring out these baskets of sopapillas, which is like a sort of a fried uh, bread with sugar dusted on it. And they're amazing. Probably the best that, that I've ever had. Also the only ones I've ever had. So, <laughs> Fair. But, well, you, you only move to the city with the best Mexican food outside of Mexico in the world. So your standards are going to be a little different. Um. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, Casa Bonita, I don't remember the food being that great and, and yes yeah, i also went there for um various birthday parties was a thing you know which uh back then it was a big deal and um yeah it's amazing it's still there and, and i'm glad that the uh, south park guys have rescued it um because i think it's an important piece of uh um history you know for it's it's so ridiculous that it needs to be saved if if, if more things are like that i think what would still be around so many great things. I don't know what. If if Red Lobster goes away due to this bankruptcy, I think we're going to see uh, similar protests. Um, I, I don't, I, I don't really eat there, but I, I will join that. I'll join that cause. Uh, definitely, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll keep it civil at first. At first, yeah. yeah. There you go. Well, if it's cool with you, I I want to bring in a JT from the band uh, Appetite for Distortion who plays the dizzy read role. Is that cool? Uh, yes by all means jt hey, dizzy jt what's up man hey man <laughs> How you doing? good to see you uh i think again that we work together a few times with gnr stuff but i uh i'm going to see no effects tonight and oh. yeah they're one of my favorite bands right up there with gnr and uh you did a song with fat mike uh for his album you're welcome by his alter ego koki the clown with Danny yeah. Lohner from Nine Inch Nails producing. I asked Fat Mike about this in an interview, and I don't think I got the full story. Can you tell me how that all came about? You play on a song called That Time I Killed My Mom. Right. Yeah, I did. Uh, um, what a what a song. What a great song, actually. It's just... Uh, um, Danny contacted me 
about doing that. They wanted some some piano, I think, on there. And uh, you're not going to not say yes to that, right? And then he, he sent me the, the track, and I'm listening to it going, this might be the darkest song I've ever heard. Like, <laughs> but it's really good, you know, because he has that that iconic sort of like, you know, punk pop voice telling that story. And, and he's, you know, he can make it, he makes it work which is just the genius of that. And um, when I got to uh, up to Danny's to record that, and I don't know if I had actually, I think I might've met Mike in the past, but this we, first time we really sat down and, you know, talked about stuff. And he started telling me about the song and that, you know, it was based on true events. And I was like, I don't, do I, can I take him serious? Like, is this for real? And I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna roll with it because, um, you know, that's that's what he's presenting. So, uh, he, he played the rest of the record for me too. Then, and I was like, I was pretty blown away. I mean, he's he's definitely got some uh, a lot of stuff going on up there, and he he expresses himself very well. His arrangements were really cool, man. Like this, this orchestration, all that. So it was actually really cool to be a part of it. And I hope whatever he told you was just as complimentary, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just was very excited that he was able to get the great Dizzy Reed to play piano on it. I'm wondering if, so did you kind of write piano parts for it? Because it's nothing like the demo or, or earlier versions of, of mm -hmm. that song from him Nor you know normally i just I'll, I'll take whatever input they give me and you know because i do a lot of sessions and um you know and i'll i'll uh if there's something real specific you know i'll give that to them but then i'll probably give them another track of what i would have done and which usually is the one that ends up you know getting used right. most of the time so i don't care if you know it's like it, it, in other cases where i'm getting paid i'll do whatever you know um, so, but with, with Mike, I just really wanted to be a part of that and add whatever I could. So from what I remember, I probably just riffed, riffed it, you know? So as Darren mentioned, I, uh, impersonate you in a tribute band, uh, called Appetite for Destruction. So right. that's my job. One of my favorite jobs that I have. And, uh, I think I need some fashion tips just so I'm getting this right. I'm wearing black jeans, the hookers and blow t-shirt sports jacket over it and of course you know the, the aviator sunglasses you're all set then uh, oh okay because it actually is such a great look i kind of just dress that way every day now so i'm just walking around walking around as a dizzy reed impersonator <laughs> yeah, well if, if i get any calls from my bank i'm gonna know who it is <laughs> well nice. can i can Did i interject you can, can you sure. confirm the last three purchases no yeah no where's that are are there um the way that it, let's say you were in a Van Halen tribute band you'd be like that's the Chicago Van Halen tribute band that's the Vegas one etc is there like a Dizzy Reed in each city's Guns N' Roses band or is JT the lone Dizzy Reed impersonator out there? I, I have met you. I have met others. Oh, there's other Dizzies out there. Yeah. Um. Actually, one. Uh. I can't. It, there was a band down in uh the Carolinas and there were a huge draw. I actually opened for them. <laughs> But they were also called Appetite for Destruction. I play uh, in the New York Appetite for Destruction. And well, the, it's, there's actually a line in in the title track, Rock and Roll Shows Me, that addresses that opening for a tribute to, you know. But anyway, they had a um they had a dizzy, but it was this this young lady. Um helps quite beautiful as you know, as a matter of fact. And 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 but you know, she played it great. And she was kind of, I think she was a little freaked out when they introduced me, you know, she was kind of, but I, she did a great job. And then uh, I got up, I think I played Civil War with them one night. Oh, and, that was my band. You, was it? you played with, well, I wasn't there. I was doing a solo tour and they said, we got Dizzy to fill in for you. I'm like, no, Dizzy graciously <laughs> played on a song. He didn't fill in for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. You know, that reminds, I, I used to host a, a, a night up at Howl at the Moon in Universal uh, uh, City Walk up here in in Hollywood, and um, it's like a piano dueling piano bar, and I would host like a or help host a, a way back Wednesdays like eighties thing, right? And they had an Alice Cooper tribute band one night, and uh, my partner Julian that did it with me, he was on vacation, so it was just me and 
um, I'm getting ready to, you know, I rounded him up. And I said, you guys got to go on. You got like five minutes. And he says, well, we can't go on yet. We're waiting for our guitar player to show up. I'm like, where is he? What the hell is going on? There's like a whole bunch of great guitar players here that know these songs. I'm sure we could, you know, and he goes, well, he's at the Alice Cooper show <laughs> down at the Wiltern. Like, wait a second. You can't go on because you're actually guitar players at the actual Alice Cooper show. That's, uh, I mean, do you see the irony here? You got five <laughs> minutes or I'm cutting it. So that was it. So you did cut it or you did make it to the gig? No, no, they went on. They, okay. They, they, they took my advice and they, they, uh, yeah, those songs, a lot of, you know, guitar players know those songs because they're so good. If, if you don't know them, you should learn them. Actually, also Alice Cooper songs are great. Well, the dueling pianos kind of thing. Usually you see the same 10 songs appear and you inevitably have to play Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Do you uh -huh. know all that stuff? Can you suffer through all that easily? I can fake my way through it. It is, after all, a dueling piano bar. So I just let the other guy, take, you know, pull the weight. But you know what? When they when I get the tip jar up to five hundred dollars to play like November Rain or whatever, I share it with them. You know, so it's all good. Can I ask <laughs> you about that song to help me with my job? What is the division of labor when there's you, Axl Rose, and Melissa Reese all playing on November Rain? Who's playing what? I know Axl's playing the piano part. What yeah, are you yeah. playing? What's Melissa playing? We we um divide up uh, as many of the. Uh, the orchestra, you know, the orchestra parts as possible, the the strings and the flutes and all that. So it's a uh, you know, before Melissa, I had to use my feet and uh, and everything, right. <laughs> and it, it was a it, you know, I, I think I had a couple of meltdowns at first, but no, it's it's just it's great that she's so good, um, and then you know, and, and we do the 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 vocal stuff as well with Dove. All yeah, the, you guys all uh, sound great together. Uh, 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 yeah. Um, but to be able to pull that off um, and, and it, you know, as far as the production goes, I mean, just to play all the orchestration um, is it, pretty cool. And I think, you know, people, if you don't appreciate it, you should, because we don't have to push play on anything. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yep. Well, I, I had one more question. If you didn't uh, mind and you're not pressed for time uh, and all that, Dizzy, are we still good on time here? Yes. Yep. I don't have my tea times not till two o'clock. Okay. So I have something, JT has something, and then we'll let you roam free. And my question to you, and it's, it's clickbaity, but it's positive. And if you say edit it out, edit it out. But the way that JT is with Guns N' Roses, I am with David Lee Roth. And I wrote a book about Roth that came out earlier this year. And I was wondering if it was true that the way that you remained the onstage Guns N' Roses keyboard player from the start and not the side stage one was using brett tuggle as the c that guy is on stage because there's rumors that originally you were going to be off stage um <clears throat> you know it was uh it was a fight <laughs> let me put it that way uh i think in the maybe some of the guys maybe the crew the production i think you know there was some talk about that and i just i don't know i think um with Axel's support, with Axel behind me, that didn't happen. And uh, hopefully that opened the door for other keyboard players to not be put behind the curtain. So the toggle rumors are not true. And uh, for- well, I mean, <laughs> the, it, it, as far as, that, uh, you know, it's, uh, I knew that there was other guys that were behind the curtain and and I, I just didn't want that to be ha to happen. So um, in a way, toggle, toggle did inspire me, I guess. Well said. And again, I'm for, for SEO and clickbait purposes, I'm going to keep saying D.I.B. is a great single. It is a great single. You have to buy Rock and Roll Chose Me in August. OK, JT, last thing to you and then we let Dizzy go. Oh, nothing. Uh, just uh, I want to say from all my experiences, uh, the times I've gotten to work for GNR at the like garden shows and things like that, uh, I will say. I don't usually relay what I hear in the van and things like that, but I will say your entire crew uh, says that's a nice boy about you, Dizzy Reed. Uh, they're always very ah, complimentary. They they like. But I do play you. rock and roll. Yes, <laughs> you are a nice boy that does play rock and roll. Contrary to Rose Tattoos. Uh, well, that's that's good to hear. And I just want to say, you know, to you, keep up the good work. And uh, you know, if you ever need any tips, 
let me know. Um, I, I, you know, I have uh, the inside track on how to be dizzy. I appreciate that. Uh, unfortunately, I tried to get stems from uh, one of your crew members, and they're like, "We're not, no, we can't give you that. Come on, just learn stems." <laughs> uh, you know, you can just you, they have these apps now that you can go in and just. Oh know, yeah, that's right. Scares the shit out of me, but um, it really <laughs> more than anything, it pisses me off that I didn't have that when I was a kid. People don't realize. The amount of time you spent listening to that record, putting the needle back, you know, over and over again. I can't. What's the piano doing there, man? What the hell? Right. And then you can't uh, try to find the sheet music. Good luck with that. Well, the most important thing is I know to tune down the half step. Uh, but you told me there was one song that you don't tune down for. There's a there's a couple, actually. OK. Um, it, because I, for, for whatever reason, that that's how I played it in the studio and my brain can't wrap around doing it. So I actually have to tune it up <laughs> to play a song. <laughs> yeah, when they bring me a piano, I'm like, unless you're bringing a piano tuner to tune it down, I'm not learning all these songs a half step up because it's like learning to walk backwards. It's it's a um, it's inconvenient to say the least. Uh, but um, you know, a lot of the songs on Illusions, I actually I had I had to learn them in two different keys. Oh. <laughs> Because it wasn't until later on, it was after, you know, kind of an after thing that we brought in the piano and tuned it down. So um, there it was. But, uh, you know, they have these things now, uh, electronic keyboards, you know, where you can just push a button. Yes, that's what I use. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, if you're using the real piano, um, you're SOL. Yeah. SOL is not the name of the single. DIB is the single. So yes. Izzy, thank you for the years of great art. Thank you for doing this and looking forward to what's to come, whether it's Hookers and Blow, you the solo guy, Gene R, et cetera. Um, man, thank you guys for your support. Thank you for having me on. And I'm glad you enjoyed the new single. There's more to come. We have another single coming out um, next month. And then the record's going to come out. And uh, I'm a little nervous because it's been in my head for so long, but I'm glad that everyone gets to hear it now. And, you know, I thank you guys. Really appreciate it for everything. Okay.